Hare Krishna. Chapter 6. Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Hare Nityananda. Jadar Shiva Siddhi Gura Vana Viva. Chapter 6 Bhagavad Gita Sankhya Yoga. Text 1. Krishna is. Arjuna is having some doubts. He's on the battlefield. He's having some doubts about what to do. Should he fight and kill everybody he knows? <laughs> or should he go to the forest and just renounce everything and eat roots and roots and berries and leaves? <laughs> which is which what what should he do? Uh, his task is he's being asked to do is very, very difficult. And Krishna is explaining the science of transcendence to him. And this is chapter 6. And Krishna has asked, uh, Arjuna has asked the question, which is better, to work as a sacrifice or to renounce work altogether? Which is better? He'd kind of like to renounce altogether if he really attractive at this point. But he's asked that question. Should I renounce work altogether or should I work as a sacrifice um, for the Supreme? So this is the middle of the conversation here. And Krishna, Krishna is continuing to answer that question, he says. The Blessed Lord said, one who is unattached to the fruits of his work and who works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life. And he is the true mystic, not he who lights no fire and performs no work. What is called renunciation is the same as yoga or linking oneself with the Supreme. For no one can become a yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense gratification. For one who is a neophyte in the Eightfold Yoga system, work is said to be the means. And for one who has already attained yoga, cessation of all material activities is said to be the means. A person is said to have attained to yoga when Having renounced all material desires, he neither acts for sense gratification nor engages in fruitive activities. A man must elevate himself by his own mind, <clears throat> not degrade himself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. For him who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. But the one who has failed to do so, his very mind will be the greatest enemy. For one has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached, for he has attained tranquility. To such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. A person is said to be established in self-realization and is called a yogi or mystic when he is fully satisfied by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization. Such a person is situated in transcendence and is self-controlled. He sees everything, whether it be pebbles, stones, or gold, as the same. <clears throat> a person is said to be still further advanced when he regards all, the honest well-wisher, friends, and enemies, 
the envious, the pious, the sinner, and those who are indifferent and impartial with an equal mind. A transcendentalist should not try to concentrate, mm, excuse me, <laughs> a transcendentalist should always try to concentrate his mind on the Supreme Self. He should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind. He should be free from desires and feelings of possessiveness. To practice yoga, one should go to a secluded place, should lay kusa grass on the ground and cover it with a deer skin and a soft cloth. The seat should neither be too high nor too low and should be situated in a sacred place. The yogi should then sit on it very firmly and should practice yoga by controlling the mind and the senses, purifying the heart, and fixing the mind on one point. One should hold one's body, neck, and head erect in a straight line and stare steadily at the tip of the nose. Thus, with unagitated, subdued mind, devoid of fear, completely free from sex, life. One should meditate upon me within the heart and make me the ultimate goal of life. Thus, practicing, controlling the body, mind, and activities, the mystic transcendentalist attains to the kingdom of God or the abode of Krishna by cessation of material existence. There is no possibility of one's becoming a yogi or Arjuna if he eats too much or eats too little, sleeps too much, but does not sleep enough. He who is temperate in his habits of eating, sleeping, working, and recreation can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. When the yogi, by practice of yoga, disciplines his mental activities, becomes situated in transcendence, devoid of all material desires, he is said to have attained yoga. As a lamp in a windless place does not waver, so the transcendentalist whose mind is controlled remains always steady in his meditation on the transcendent self. This stage of perfection is called trance or samadhi when one's mind is completely restrained from material mental activities by practice of yoga. This is characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and to relish and rejoice in the self. In that joyous state, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness and enjoys himself through transcendental senses. Established thus, one never departs from the truth and upon gaining this, he thinks there is no greater gain. <clears throat> Being situated in such a position, one is never shaken, even in the midst of greatest difficulty. This indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. One should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with undeviating determination and faith. One should abandon, without exception, all material desires born of false ego, and thus control all the senses on all sides by the mind. Gradually, step by step, with full conviction, one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence, and thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else. From whatever and wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it, bring it back under the control of the self. The yogi whose mind is fixed on me verily attains the highest happiness. By virtue of his identity with Brahman, he's liberated. His mind is peaceful, his passions are quieted, and he's free from sin. Steady in the self, being fixed from all material contamination, the yogi achieves the highest perfectional happiness in touch with the Supreme Consciousness. 
A true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized man sees me everywhere. One who sees me everywhere sees everything in me. I'm never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. The yogi who knows that I and the super soul within all creatures are one worships me and remains always in me in all circumstances. He is a perfect yogi who, by comparison to his own self, sees the true equality of all beings, both in their happiness and distress. Oh, Arjuna. Arjuna said, O oh, Sudan, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable to me, for the mind is restless and unsteady. For the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O oh Krishna, and to subdue it, it seems to me more difficult than controlling the wind. The Blessed Lord said, O mighty arm, son of Kunti, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind. But it is possible by constant practice and by detachment. For one whose mind is unbridled, self-realization is difficult work. But he whose mind is controlled and strives by right means is assured of success. That is my opinion. Arjuna said, what is the destination of the man of faith who does not persevere, who in the beginning takes to the process of self-realization, but who later desists due to worldly mindedness and thus does not attain perfection in mysticism? Almighty Amt Krishna, does not such a man being deviated from the path of transcendence perish like a riven cloud with no position in any sphere? This is my doubt, O Krishna, and I ask you to dispel it completely, but for yourself, no one is to be found who can destroy this doubt. Blessed Lord said, Son of Prita, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction, either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy. Or he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Verily, such a birth is rare in this world. On taking such a birth, he again revives the divine consciousness of his previous life. And he tries to make further progress in order to achieve complete success. By virtue of the divine consciousness of his previous life, he automatically becomes attracted to the yogic principles even without seeking them. Such an inquisitive transcendentalist striving for yoga stands always above the ritualistic principles of the scriptures. But when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being washed of all contaminations, then ultimately, after many, many births of practice, he attains the supreme goal. A yogi is greater than the aesthetic, greater than, greater than the empiricist, and greater than the fruit of worker. Therefore, O oh Arjuna, in all circumstances, be a yogi. And of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshiping me in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. Oh, Krishna.
Jai Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita. As it is. <laughs>